Hey guys, thank you for checking out TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com, TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Uh, keep sending in your questions however you want. Dan at TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com is easiest. But if you like social networks, I'm on just about all of them. Just search for me with my name, Dan Sfera. Uh, I got a really good one regarding sub-investigator, and I wanted to get into it. First of all, what a sub-eye is, is it could be an MD. It's usually an MD that backs up the PI, but it doesn't always have to be an MD. It could be a PhD, or it could be like a MA or something. Uh, someone that the PI has delegated certain responsibilities to. That is what a sub-investigator is. Now some sub-eyes, especially the MD sub-eyes, they can do just about anything the PI does. As long as they're on the delegation of duties log and they've been appropriately trained, they can do just about anything the PI does. Other sub-eyes only do certain assessments, but the sponsor wants them listed as sub-eyes on the 1572, maybe because those assessments are of particular importance to the study or the protocol. And uh, there's two extremes and then everything, of course, in between, which probably the majority of the sites will fall somewhere in between. But the question is, what responsibilities do you give to a sub-eye? and how do you compensate them so let me just first start talking to you about the extremes okay so and like i said most sites most research clinics are going to be somewhere in between these two extremes on one extreme sites just put sub eyes because they want to build up their cvs their resumes they want to give their sub eyes more experience so that the sub eyes can eventually become pis one day and by one day i mean two years if you put an md on enough studies as a sub-I, eventually a sponsor is going to consider that MD for a PI. So a lot of sub-I's are willing to do some work for no pay in order to get experience. And oftentimes this work is really not much. I mean the PI is ultimately responsible for the study. The sub-I's understand this. The sub-I's also understand that they got to put in their work if they want to get the experience. Um, the other extreme is that the sub eye is delegated everything the PI uh, can do, and the sub eye, uh, the PI is holding the sub eye responsible for completing all those assessments and conducting every assessment that the PI would do. So in this case, it's like a backup. In these cases, the sub eye has to be an MD if they're doing everything the PI is doing. In these cases, what sites do. Sometimes they can get away with having the sub I do all the work and not paying them anything because of the what we talked about before in exchange for putting their name on a bunch of studies as sub eyes, they can eventually become PIs. So sub eyes are willing to do that. But more often than not, the sub eyes are compensated on a fee, like a specific fee for each procedure. So typically you'll look at your budget and you look at what procedures uh what the site gets compensated for those procedures and you calculate a percentage that you're going to allocate to the sub eye for those procedures. So in a nutshell that's what a sub investigator is. Their responsibilities as you can see can vary wildly from just being a basically an investigator on paper to actually running the entire study and compensation also varies widely but wildly and widely. Uh, but that's in a nutshell what a sub eye is what they do and how they get compensated. This is Dan from TheClinicalTrialsGuru.com. Take care.